Hey guys, uh, this is Pradeep and this video is one of the many training videos available on uh, seleniumframework.com. Uh, so this is the website. Um, in this, web in this uh, video, we are going to see specifically how can we set up a continuous integration job on Jenkins, the job which can eventually kick off our test automation suite. Okay, so you can find this um, description under the CICD CT section here under frameworks and beyond. Okay. All right. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing what you would like to do is get the Jenkins server. So you go to jenkinsci.org and you know, just download the latest and greatest. Uh, click this link, latest and greatest. In my case, I've already downloaded it, right? And I downloaded it and put it under um, C column Jenkins ward, right? Uh, Hey guys, this is Pradeep and this is one of the uh, many training videos available on uh, seleniumframework.com. This is the website. Um, this video we are going to see how we can set up a continuous integration job for kicking off the automation tests. Okay, We will be using Jenkins as a continuous integration server and the entire description for this is also present under the CI CD CD section on the uh, website under framework and beyond. Okay. So the first thing what you would like to do is go to jenkinsci.org. Um, this is the website uh, for Jenkins. Download the latest and greatest, right, the WAR file. Um, once you download it, right, so I've already downloaded it and I placed it in a folder um, on my C drive, C colon Jenkins WAR. Um, so have the WAR file here. And the next thing what you would want to do as soon as you have the Jenkins WAR file, you would want to start the CI server. Before going there, um, go ahead, right click on your computer properties, go to your advanced system settings, environment variables, right? And then set a variable which says Jenkins home. So in our case, let's set the Jenkins home to C colon Jenkins WAR. Okay. Um, now I already set it, but you would have to go ahead and do new and then, you know, type Jenkins underscore home and then type C colon slash right I'm sorry Jenkins one you would have to do this okay I've already done that so I'm going to say okay okay close this um, now once you have done and set the Jenkins home the second thing what you would want to check is um, check whether you have uh, JDK, which is Java Development Toolkit. Okay, so um, you know I'm not going to go into details of how to set up a JDK. I'm assuming that you would have a JDK set up on your machine. I quickly check if I have JDK. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to echo uh, a variable which generally uh, we would set once we have a JDK home. Okay, seems like I don't have. Maybe I have to open a new command window. Let's uh, echo once again. I have just set it and uh, all right, there you go. So I have a JDK home. Okay. Now, once I have this, uh, what I would do is I would navigate to Jenkins War and then start the CI server. The command is very simple. All you would have to say is Java hyphen jar and then say Jenkins War. Okay. So you can see, you know, um, Jenkins first, what it checks for is it tries to get an environment variable, Jenkins underscore home. You can see here, dot get Jenkins underscore home. If it finds that home, it will use that folder as a home. If not, it would it would uh, set it um, to your home directory dot Jenkins, uh, which it will set by default. In my case, I wanted C colon Jenkins ward, right, this one, to be my Jenkins home. So I set it. So you can see that you know Jenkins started. It started on port 8080. Okay. So when we access Jenkins in the browser, we will be using port 8080. Um, so it's doing some initialization operations. And while it is doing the initialization operations, you can see in the folder behind it's creating number of folders uh, which it internally manages and it knows the structure about. Okay. Um, so le let us uh, wait until this gets completed.
All right. So now we got a message which says Jenkins is fully up and running. Okay. So let's minimize this window here. I would not need this now here. And um, let's go ahead and close this. And let's go ahead and open now uh, localhost 8080. Okay. So this is the first screen you would see when you launch Jenkins. Now let's go ahead and the first thing what we would want to do is go ahead and say manage Jenkins. Once you do that, um, you would see this warning message. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, do a setup security. Okay. And let's enable security here. Once we enable security, what we would want to do now is um, let's go and uh, say, you know, only logged in users can do anything. And the security realm I would want to use at this time is I'll just use a Jenkins own user database and I will allow users to sign up on this. Um, obviously, you know, our intent here is to run our test automation suite and see how it aligns with the CI server and not to set up an entire CI server because that is a whole world in itself for a build and release management. Um, so, you know, you can set up uh, a cluster of uh, Jenkins with a master and a slave and you know anyways um, that's a that's a totally out of scope discussion so for now go ahead and select Jenkins own user database logged in users can do anything okay and let's prevent you know any cross-site requests uh, just for additional security and then go ahead and save this so once you save this you would come to this login page again and you know you would like to know what user you would want to use right I don't have any user so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and sign up for a user type in my name and I'll type in my password okay give my full name and then give my uh, email ID okay and then I'll go ahead and do a sign up so at this at this point I would see um, that you know I'm signed up for this server and I can see that you know my name appears and I the logout button appears which means I have successfully signed in. Okay. So uh, the first thing, uh, the way Jenkins work is you would have to set up a job. Um, essentially a job would be uh, a continuous integration job. Uh, in a bigger picture the job would essentially source, take the source code, compile it, run the unit tests, do any code quality checks and then eventually deploy it onto a target machine and once it deploys it, it hands it off to the automation test suite. Now we are seeing only the part where we are uh, trying to kick off the automation test suite, right? Because um, you know obviously we are focused on test automation at this time, and um, you know our interest is to see how that works. So the first thing what you would like to do here is go ahead and say new item, okay? And the item here is freestyle project, and you know what I would like to call this is I would like to call selling framework.com acceptance test, and say okay. Right. So the job is now created. Now let's go ahead and configure a few things. Um, ultimately what I would like to do is I would like to kick off my page object framework um, acceptance test which we are already written. So um, the first thing I would uh, like to do here is you know I'll just put in some description. I'm going to copy this and paste the same description here and uh, add a build step. In my build step what I want to do is I want to execute a shell. This is a Windows box I'm using, so um, it, 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 you know, using shell means it uses the command line CMD. Okay. Um, now let's first talk about what do we want to do in this shell, right? Now what I want to do is I want to go to my page object framework, right, which I've checked out from GitHub repository, which is put up on SeleniumFramework.com uh, code basis page, and then once I have this checked out, I want to run a, a feature. Which feature do I want to run? I want to run the confirm order because it it runs the entire workflow, um, the shopping cart workflow. Okay, so I have it at some you know in some location. Um, what is the location I have it at? C colon git project some folder page object framework. Okay, that is where I have. Now, so first thing I would have to instruct the CI server is to tell you know how do I navigate to that specific folder. And then once I navigate it, I would want to do a bundle exec. So, you know, I have typed all of this already. So let me paste this 
what I'm doing here is I'm doing a PWD. PWD stands for present working directory. So um, I just want to know where would Jenkins put me by default. Once I know that, I would um, change it to the folder where I want to. And again, I'm doing a PWD just to see that it did change. And then eventually from that point, I just execute my acceptance test. In my case here, confirm order. So I'll go ahead and click save. So you um, end up here on this uh, page, which is, uh, uh, you know, project acceptance test. Okay. So once this is done, uh, what would you like to do? You go ahead and hit this button, build now. So if I go ahead and click this build now, it says build schedule. Okay. And then the job gets started. All right. And if you go ahead and click this, you can see the console output here. It states started by uh, Pradeep Machala and then you know, you can see that it has already started my automation uh, test suite execution. Okay. So there you go. Um, we can see that uh, uh, the scenario has is executed here, and then um, you know, one scenario passed, and the job is also success. Let's see the results, right? The results would definitely be written here. Let's see, results.html. If you go ahead and open this, you can see that all of them has passed. So this is a, a very extremely simple example of how uh, you can set up a Jenkins job and run your automation test suite. The reason why you were doing this uh, is definitely uh, to see, you know, ultimately whatever tests you are building, whatever test automation suite you are building should align with the continuous integration server uh, so you know every time you write a test case at some point you would want to check that it works on a CI server right um, now in an enterprise setting this might uh, be in, at a much larger scale uh, this video is just to give you a, a flavor or a taste of how um, you can execute it on a continuous integration server um, that is it guys um, thank you very much we will catch up soon again